and gentlemen, my name is Ambassador Peace Bloom of the WoW podcast, Blue Please, on CynicalBritch.com. Welcome to what was supposed to be a Wipeathon 3000 presentation for the Ascendant Council, but we kind of kicked its ass, at least after the uh, first attempt. So I'm going to show you the first attempt on normal speed to give you a feel for the fight, and then I will show you the successful kill. Strategy will be given, of course, and this is on 10-man mode. This is one of the most entertaining and original fights that I've done so far in Cataclysm. It is really, really good. Don't get discouraged by the fact that we kill it on the second attempt. It's still a really good encounter. So, here's what happens. In the first phase, you're going to get two guys. You're going to get a water guy, you're going to get a fire guy. Ignatius is the fire guy, and however the hell you pronounce it, what Felucius is the water guy. So, here's what they do. Each of them has a magic damage debuff that needs to be dispelled. It's going to go on random members of the raid, so you need to get rid of that. You also have this charge ability. He's going to charge across the room, doing this leap, and then he's going to run back to the tank. And anyone that's in the path of that flame is going to get knocked back. So you want to watch out for that. The fire guy will also do something called rising flame, which will put up a big shield on him. Or DPS the shield down. If you don't, then the AoE will eventually kill the raid. So you have to refocus on him. Now, the Frost Guy does random water bolts. Now, these things you do have to worry about because they have a debuff called Water Logs. If you have this debuff, you have to then run into the fire to get rid of it. If you don't run into the fire, it will gradually slow you down and then freeze you, which is not good at all. He's also got an area of effect attack called Glaciate. Glaciate used to kill anyone in melee range, but it doesn't anymore, which is rather odd. It does less damage the further you are away from it, so if he does a Glaciate, then get the hell out of there. Rising Flame, there you can see it. Just DPS the shield down, and there you go. What you have to do in this fight is spread your damage. You've got to make sure that you don't knock down one and leave the other at full health, because if you do, it'll make Phase 3 really difficult. So switch between the two. We put our melee on the fire guys so they didn't have to run out of the Glaciate, and we put our ranged on the ice slash water guy. You can see there, someone didn't get their waterlogged removed in time, and as a result, they froze. Not a lot you can really do about that other than heal them through the damage. It will eventually break. Just keep doing damage. Get them both to about 30%, and then burn them both down with dots. That's generally the best way to do it. We're about to enter phase two right here, so the transition is not particularly difficult. Not a lot you really need to worry about. Just getting that waterlogged off right there. Like you say, you only need to eat a tick of that. Just go into the edge of it. Get rid of the waterlog buff, get out of it. It doesn't do a huge amount of damage, but it does it at a fairly rapid rate. So I'm sure your healers are not going to appreciate you standing in it for longer than that. There's that area of effect once again. This shield, as far as I can tell, seems to have been nerfed. It was a lot tougher to bring down before. Okay, phase two. Now I've got two new guys here. We've got the wind guy and we've got the earth guy. This phase is an awful lot more hectic. So here is what to expect. So, the Earth guy is going to cast those Void Zones on the ground. Those Void Zones actually suck you in if you're too close, and they give you a debuff called Grounded. Now, the gimmick of this particular phase is that each of these bosses has a ability which is going to do massive damage to the entire raid. Annoyingly, it used to instantly kill you. They seem to have nerfed that as well, and that's something I would strongly suggest they revert, because it does take the teeth out of this fight. So, what's going to happen is, you're going to get a Quake, and you're also going to get a Thunder Shock. Now, in order to avoid the damage of the Quake, you have to run into the Cyclone. Yeah? You see that Cyclone over there that I ran into? You've got to go in there and you get a... It looks like a debuff, but it really kind of isn't. It's basically a levitate. And once the quake goes off, as long as you have that levitate, nothing will happen. Now, you've also got to be concerned with the other ability, which is Thundershock, which is about to go off here and I'm about to fail miserably at it. You can see how much damage it does. And what you have to do is you've got to make your way into one of the Void Zones to get the Grounded debuff. And if you don't have that, as you can see, you take 64k damage. That used to kill you outright. I don't know why it doesn't anymore. Evidently, it blatantly should, but we were wiping by this point, and as you can see, everything is sort of falling apart. Whatever the case, it's a swap between the two. You're always going to get a Quake first, as far as I can tell, then a Thundershock, then a Quake, then a Thundershock. So you swap between the two, make sure you've got the appropriate debuff. If you don't, you're going to take a lot of damage, and I imagine on Heroic mode, you're certainly going to die. As far as I'm concerned, on Normal mode, you should die as well. It's a very telegraphed mechanic. It's really, really easy to see it coming. It even tells you without deadly boss mods or anything like that. Other abilities you've got to worry about in this fight, there is a ground spike, which you are going to want to try and get out of. You'll see dust on the floor for a couple of seconds, then a spike will come out. It'll knock you back, do big damage. You also have to concern yourself with the yellow arrow that appears over one of your raid members. 
That's an indicator for some actual chain lightning. If you are near raid members within a couple of seconds of actually getting that, then you're going to do horrendous raid damage. So if you get the yellow, move the hell away from it and make sure that people don't move near you. This bit of the fight is actually quite tricky, and you have to make sure you've got the right debuff and you don't get confused between the two but of course don't stand in either of them for too long because they're going to hurt the void zones particularly will suck you in again so they're going to do progressive damage if you're not very quick to get out of them Okay, here is the successful kill attempt sped up a little bit. This will also show you Phase 3. There's not a lot to explain about Phase 3, only that it is an incredibly intense damage race and you will see that very very shortly indeed now, we didn't really alter our strategy for Phase 1 because there was nothing necessarily wrong with it. You have to watch out for those knockbacks, though. You see, I got knocked into a Glaciate right there now. Pre-nerf, that would have actually killed me. Didn't kill me that time, but hey. So, you do want to spread out quite a bit and try and keep an eye out for the direction he runs in. You do have about a second to try and move away when he does his jump. So, hopefully you shouldn't get knocked too far away. What you also want to make sure with your positioning is that you don't take the fire guy too far away from the frost guy because you need to be quite close to the trail of fire just in case you get waterlogged right there, took it off, no problem at all. And since you need to switch over to the fire guy once you get the rising flame, you want to make sure that you are within 40 yards of him. Otherwise, that shield is going to stay up and you're going to get a little bit too much AoE raid damage. Like I say, it does seem to have been declawed. This did used to be a little bit crazier and hopefully they will revert it back to its old state because it's still an amazing fight. Don't get me wrong, this is freaking incredible. It's really fun. But because a lot of these mechanics that would have otherwise killed you don't anymore, it's less challenging than it should be. Right, we're doing fairly well right here. Very nice transition through to phase two. Pick him up. Set up right here, by the way, is two tanks, three healers, and five DPS. You do only need one tank in phase three, so if you have a bear as your off tank, that's quite good, because at least they can then go cat and do a little bit of damage. Right, okay, so we're in phase two right here, and we're not having too many problems. Now make sure we get the right buffs at the right time. Again, this fight is a awful lot about movement so any talents you have that allow you to cast or do damage while moving are going to be quite handy watch out for that chain lightning right there at the background there's the thunder shock we were grounded for that so no real problem at all back into the tornado the best thing you can really do honestly is as soon as the ability goes off go and get the appropriate buff for the next one because it's predictable it's always going to be the same one so as soon as quake goes off go find yourself a void zone go jump into it go get the grounded buff in preparation for the thunder shock and then you can just do as much damage as possible i'm hanging around here because i really don't need to move too much i'm right next to one and i've got blink as well so that's all good trying to stay away from my raid with that chain lightning as you saw there i was dragged back into the void zone any ability you have to quickly move if you get stuck in one of those void zones is probably for the best Okay, got the wind debuff just as I passed there. You only need to touch it, so it's not too hard at all. Let's just keep focusing the damage down right here. Here comes the quake. Nobody dies from that either, so we are in a good state. Our major failure in this particular phase was actually a massive screw-up in terms of the chain lightning. You'll see it killed one of our paladins. It would have killed me if I hadn't cauterized. Somebody ended up having that, so it's a little bit unpleasant. Do be careful. Here's phase three, folks. This is where things start to get very real indeed. Now, we haven't combat res the paladin as of yet because we think we probably can't take this, but as it turns out, we realize, oh yeah, we actually probably can, so let's do it. Let's do the combat res. Now, all you've got to deal with here are these pools on the floor, you've got to kite him around constantly melee have to watch out for excessive damage from that and you're going to take all of this area of effect raid damage lava seeds these lightning bolts these kind of asphyxiate kind of things loads of unpleasant stuff is just going to get hurled at the raid pop your time warp pop your bloodlust save all of your cooldowns for this particular phase because it is absolute madness the aoe constantly does more and more and more damage as you can see the healers having a lot of troll keeping up there down to 1 million hp but we're starting to lose people which is very problematic we lost one tank but our other one is still up so we're good i'm down and then we get really, really messy. People dying all over the place. 500k, 400k. Look at all of this nonsense. Look at this. This is Malzahar all over again. Absolute pain and suffering coming on right here. 200k HP. 200k. Unbelievable. 100k. We have a single bear. The single bear is all that will survive. Hero bear. 
Yes! 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 yes. <laughs> Second attempt! You can tell by the excitement on the vent there, this fight is still fantastic. Even after the nerfs, it's still really, really fun to do. That doesn't mean that they shouldn't sort those abilities out. Stuff with that big a telegraph should be an instant kill. You have plenty of time to get the buff that you need. You should die from that ability. I mean, Chain Lightning can kill people, and yet their primary big theme ability can't. That just seems ridiculous to me. I don't get it. I don't know why they nerfed that, but it does need to be reverted back to the original state as far as I'm concerned. Aside from that, it's a, such a great fight. Really fun to do, and hopefully you guys will enjoy it. That's been my guide to the Ascendant Council. That's the third boss in the Bastion of Twilight. The next one is, of course, Cho'Gao. I'll see you next time.